Hey everybody, welcome to Chin Fat. Uh, in this episode, I'm going to be transitioning to Premiere Pro uh, 2023 because this has been updated uh, recently in the past week here. If you want to see my other tutorials that kind of in this uh, playlist, you'll have to go to back to the Premiere Pro 2022 playlist. Uh, you can find that by going to my channel in YouTube, typing in Chin Fat. That will find my channel. You can click on my channel and click on playlist. And now, I, and here is my Premiere Pro 2022 playlist, and that's going to have several episodes starting from episode one, ending on episode 24. And now I'm continuing episode 25 in the Premiere Pro 2023 playlist. So if you're looking for the earlier episodes, go to the Premiere Pro 2022 playlist, and you can watch those there. I do have a tutorial on working with the workspaces within Premiere Pro, uh, changing these basically these layouts here uh, for different types of functions here. But they have added a few things that I kind of wanted to go over. First of all, just kind of the basics with layouts here. They have this little pull down here at the top right hand corner for workspaces and layouts. If you click on this, uh, you'll have different arrangements here. I'm under the assembly layout right now, uh, but you have the editing layout as well as a very commonly used one where you have the project window, the source monitor, the timeline, and the program window. Assembly edits usually the first thing that you're doing is just getting a basic assemble of the uh, of all the visuals in a timeline that you need to tell your story. Uh, but if I go under uh, assembly here, this uh, makes it only three windows on a single screen. And it shares the same window space between the source monitor and the program window, which is really nice because it gives you more uh, space over here to look at your media. And if you need more information on this, more details on this, go to episode 10 under my Premiere Pro 2022 list, and this goes into way more details on that. I'm not, I just wanted to kind of concentrate on the newer layouts that they have here. Some of the newer layouts that I'm finding very uh, helpful is, first of all, this, uh, this, um, this Essentials one is, is awesome. You click on this, because I've made a custom... Uh, layout where I actually did this myself, where I saved a layout myself with these uh, items right here because I wanted quick access to the Lumetri color, to essential graphics, essential sound, and so on. They actually, and then they have a graphics one here as well. So let me expand this window here and show you this a little bit here. So they have all these kind of functions here that are very uh, essential that you will find if you click on this little drop down here, you'll find the color layout which has the Lumetri color panel here on the side, then your scopes over here is very common. They have an audio one that gives you the essential sound uh, layout right right over here with the essential sound. Uh, and I should be calling these panels here. It's got this panel on the side here uh, to do quick editing features on your sound or color. If you go under captions and graphics, it has the essential graphics panel here on the side to edit text and graphics. But now if you go under the essentials, it basically has all those panels here on the side. I, I changed this a little bit so I can reset this back to the original layout, but watch this. I've got the effect controls here. So if you're gonna wanna change attributes and animate attributes over time, but this is really nice because if you just want a quick uh, panel where you're do, doing some quick updates on the color. Here you have your little color grading um, a panel here, your Lumetri color panel. Uh, then you've got your essential graphics, so you can add graphics to it. If you want to uh, mess with graphics or edit graphics, and then if you got, then if you want to do a little bit, a little bit of sound mixing, then you have your essential sound panel. Incredibly helpful layout there, and I love that this layout, and I'm going to use it quite often. Like I said, I had a custom one that I made, but I'm going to be end up, I'm going to end up using their layout now. So under workspaces, I'm going to get this back to normal by going down to reset saved layout, to reset to saved layout. Do that. It will never permanently overwrite your original uh, layouts. You can have, if, if you want to, if you do some changes like this and you want to save this layout, and I like that with a little bit more space, I can go up and pull this down and say, save as new workspace, and then I can name it whatever I want to, hit OK, and that will be there as a custom one. And I've, if I pull this down, I do have some custom one like these ones for my dual laptop, uh, color dual, basement dual, for different computers that I work on uh, that I've saved custom layouts for. Another cool one they've added is vertical for working with uh, videos like uh, TikTok. If you do that arrangement there, it makes this kind of tall panel right here. Right now, I've got 16 by 9 footage. Let's bring in some phone footage here. Let's bring in some uh, TikTok phone footage. All right, I've imported a vertical video here shot on my phone. This is typ very typical. Oh, it even has a little TikTok thing on it burned in there. When you drop it in your timeline, it's going to make this vert vertical window on the side for editing TikTok videos or other formats that might be shot vertically, which is kind of nice. Rather than try to squeeze this into a regular editing space, if you go up to Assembly Edit, uh, then you have this kind of tall window that's that's... And then you got all this extra space on the side where your normal widescreen movie would be. So that um, that vertical there is a really nice way to go for editing vertical videos. And this layout even gives you those essential panels right here as well. It adds this layout as well where you've got your effect controls, uh, you've got your Lumetri color panel. You've got so now you can do color grading really quickly. Essential uh, graphics for adding quick graphics to your uh, to your file. You can select file graphics, drop them in, and edit the graphics. Uh, there it is right there. Uh, and then you got your essential sound panel and for doing text as well for transcribing and captioning. 
A couple other things they've added here as you go under, you, we've got this learning tab right here. This one's been there for a little while, uh, but they do have uh, tutorials down here on the side, which you don't need because you can just come to my channel, right? So there you go. Now, but this actually has resources. It'll have some video clips you can add and download uh, to mess around and learn, learn how to use Premiere, which is kind of cool. And one other layout that they've got that I really like is right here under, under review. Right here, review. Uh, Adobe has finally made their software uh, where it's really just solidly connected to what's called Frame.io. Frame.io is a software that's, uh, that's an online software that's, that's used to uh, send your edit uh, over the web to another person like a producer or director that's, that wants to see your editing, to see your edit, and then they can make notes on that edit, and then you will see the notes that they've sent. And it's really become a lot easier to do that. Uh, the, the software is now very interconnected. This is your Frame.io window right here. Sometimes if you're not logged in, it'll ask you to log in and make a login with your email address that's associated with your uh, with, with your Creative Cloud account. And then you can go to uh, upload and you can upload an active sequence. This is a very small sequence here, uh, that, but I'm going to load my active sequence. It's going to ask you what uh, resolution you want it in, what the name of it is and so on. When you hit upload, it's going to ask you what you want to do, uh, where you want to put it as a scratch disk on your computer. It will render it to that scratch disk, then upload it, and uh, then have it online ready for somebody to view, and then you can share it. So I can just click to render to custom folder, and I'm doing it in my, uh, and I'm doing it on my computer in a Frame.io folder there. Hit OK, and I've chosen that location. Now I can hit upload. It'll open up Media Encoder, render it, and upload it to, to the Frame.io cloud. So then you can share it right here. You got your share button. You can share that with somebody else. Then they can put markers on it. They can put notes on it, and then it sends it back to you. Then they send it back to you, and you will know what changes you need to make. So if you have a timeline you're ready to approve uh, that you need to send to a director to have them approve, I'm going to hit the upload button right here and we're going to do an active sequence, which is the one that's open right now. Uh, you do want to change the location here for this because it will render it to your computer and then upload the rendered file. So it doesn't upload everything to the cloud. It just uh, uh, it quickly uploads a compressed version of your file for the uh, for the director or producer or whoever to look at. And even if you have markers on here, if you put markers for comments, you can send those as well. So I don't have any markers right now, but if, you, if I did have markers, in here with a note on it. I like this shot. Hit OK. And let's upload that now. And check mark export markers as comments. Upload. It'll load it into Media Encoder. It will compress it. And then once that's done, it'll say Upload queued and it will start uploading your file to the Frame.io server. And once that's done, you can select that and you can share it to anybody else. And then they'll be able to open it up, make comments on it, and then Frame.io will show you the notes and the change. It'll show you the notes that they created inside of this timeline here. So then once they've posted those notes, you just double click on the sequence right here, opens it up, and you'll see the notes that they've posted in here with the changes that they are needing in your timeline. So those are just a few of the new layouts that they've added uh, to the workspace uh, drop-down menu here. Uh, very helpful. I really like the one, the new ones that they've added. I'm going to use and I've already used them quite a bit. So if you have any questions or comments, uh, let me know.